Did you know that you can build custom toolbar items of your own with just a few lines of code? Adding extensions to browser dev tools can be very complicated. I have made several of them and it's always been a huge pain. They're plagued by browser compatibility issues and once you're done, the real work begins, getting everyone on your team to actually install and use it. But in Storybook, you can build custom toolbar items in minutes and share them with your team immediately. Let's learn how. Hey, I'm Chantastic, and I'm here to help you become a Storybook Pro. If you'd like to level up your UI engineering game, subscribe for tips and tutorials with me. Today, we'll create a custom toolbar item for your Storybook UI. We'll add a locale dropdown that allows you to select a locale and update your story with that language. We'll build upon last week's tutorial where we installed React IAT Next, an internationalization library. If you wanna follow along with that first and come back, you can click this card above and it'll take you to the right video. A big thanks to Sean Lloyd for building this tutorial that we're following today. You can catch it on our blog in the description below. First things first, locate the storybook preview.js file in your project. Then export an object named global types. Add a property with a unique name for this toolbar item. I'll use locale and assign it an object. In it, add the toolbar property, that's also an object. And in toolbar, we'll assign items as an array with values for the two languages that we currently support, English and Arabic. Save and jump back over to Storybook. I'll hide the sidebar for a little bit more room and we'll see a minimally configured dropdown button for locale. Go ahead and select an option to see that it works. Now, before we go any further, I wanna make sure that you understand what's happening here and what global types are doing for us. When we export an object like this, we're actually creating a linked UI between this dropdown and the URL. If we go to the end of this URL, we'll see this query string for globals and in it, we'll have locale with a value of N. As we change this, that URL updates, locale AR. We can change it in either place and the value syncs. There's a little bit of magic to global types, but it's all magic that's visible to you via the URL and this dropdown button. Now that we have a good sense about how global types work, let's take a look at some of the configuration options that will give us a better user experience. First is name. Add a name property to this global type. This is a string, it can have special characters, whatever you want. Now, without impacting the variable name or what we see in the query string, we can change the name that's presented inside the toolbar. We can also add a description, something like controls global locale, and that gives us a little bit more information on hover, making it just a little bit more accessible to someone approaching the storybook for the first time. So now we've added a name and description to this toolbar, which is great, but I'd like to control the presentation as well. You see that it looks a little bit out of place. We have all of these really nice icons and then just this word, locale. We can easily add a few UI niceties. Jump down into this toolbar object and add the property icon. I'll use an icon named globe. That seems to make sense in this case. And our toolbar item changed from the text to a globe. Storybook has a host of icons that you can use for this. It's always linked in the description below. Now, when we add an icon, it's icon only by default, but we can use the show name property to make sure that we see the icon and the name together. But my preferred way is to use an option called dynamic title. Dynamic title will include the selected value, which is really handy information at a glance. Now we have a really nice looking toolbar item button that's very interactive, but we can make the options look really nice as well. We start by changing this simple string option to an object and assigning this value to the property value. We then also need a title. If I put en here again, this is equivalent to the string version that we had before. But now that we're defining both individually, we can change this to something more human readable, like English. We can do one last thing, which is to add a flag to either the right or left of this text. Use my emoji picker, find the American flag, and save. Now when we click on this dropdown for locale, we see the American flag and the word English. But we still retain the literal value of en. Let's give our Arabic translation the same treatment. Save. And now we see both translations looking really great. Much more friendly than their literal values. If your goal today was just to learn about custom toolbars in the Storybook UI, congratulations, you've done it. That's all you need to know. 
But if you followed along with our tutorial last week where we integrated React IET Next and Storybook, well, then we have a few more steps to actually make this dropdown work. So let's wire up this toolbar item to our components. Over on the Storybook blog, our friend Sean Lloyd has created a really great tutorial for connecting IET Next and Storybook. If you scroll down, you'll find the exact configuration that we need. It's after all of the initial setup, a little bit further down here. This is the part that we covered today, right here. Let's copy and paste it and I'll tell you what it does. Just drop that in right here. Make sure that we have all of the required imports, which will be use effects and suspense from React and the i18 next provider from React i18 next. So what do we have? We have here a new decorator. A decorator is kind of like a storybook higher order component. It will take the story that's being rendered and the context. Now context includes this globals object where we've stored our locale value. So we're just destructuring that off. Now, anytime this locale value changes from globals, we're gonna use this use effect and manually change the language using that locale. In this component decorator, we'll add suspense for a fallback in case this provider fails. We'll use the i18next provider to provide our instanced i18next object and then render the story inside of it. Now there's one last step to add this decorator to all of our components. We need to export decorators and in an array pass with i18next. Hit save. We saw a brief flash, which means that this should be wired up. Let's change the language back to English and then Arabic again. Just like that, we have this control wired up to change our language and update all of our stories using this i18 next provider as a decorator. Now, there is one little point of configuration that I did skip over that impacts you if you're using Storybook 6.5, React 18, and React i18 next. We're we're gonna fix, but right now, these three libraries don't love working together with React 18's new root API. React 18's new root API is enabled by default in Storybook 6.5. So if you want to disable it, just open the main file and make sure that you have React Options, Legacy Root API, True. Now this will all be sorted out soon, but if you're sitting there right now pulling your hair out with these infinite spinners and not getting your translations to load, this is probably the reason. Add that option, and you'll be good to go. So that's it for me. If you have questions about building custom toolbar items using global types, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Even better yet, join our Discord server of 15,000 great designers and developers using Storybook every day. If you like this video on adding a custom toolbar to control localization, you might wanna check out this video that we just released last week showing you how to integrate React i18 Next into Storybook. We take a step-by-step -step approach. We don't leave anyone behind. So check it out. You can find links to everything mentioned in this tutorial in the description below. I'm Chantastic, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.